Welcome back. BYU Baseball expected to have another good season this year, led by Mike Littlewood. For a season preview, here's Jason Shepard. Joining me now, the head baseball coach of the BYU Cougars. He is Mike Littlewood. And coach, after a long offseason, the season is here. How excited are you for uh, for the 2022 season to finally be here? Oh, man, I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am, especially to have just a, the team we have, a much more mature team, basically the same team we've had the last couple of years with some experience under their belt uh, and, a, a, and a, some great additions to the team. So we're ready to get going. Yeah, and w what are your overall thoughts? I mean, because obviously the guys have been practicing and uh, for the last you know couple of weeks had the off season, the fall season. So this team has been able to get together and and see what you can what you can do. What have been your overall impressions early on? Well, yeah, I mean we've we've been out practicing basically like our spring training from September seventh or whatever. You know, first day of, first day of school, we've been uh, ready to go. Um, I think overall it's just uh, just a much ma more mature team. Um, we're going to have a strong pitching staff, the deepest staff we've ever had. I think we're twelve pitchers deep that can actually go in games and, and help us get outs. Um, but on the position player side, I'm, I'm really excited just because they've grown up. They're, they're much more able to put together good at-bats. Um, they'll compete a little bit better. They have an understanding of, of what the game's all about instead of just kind of going up there, oh, I hope, hope I can hit the ball. And so that's just the maturity level and, and how we're going about things and, and, and our comfort level. Um, and it kind of showed when we played Utah. Uh, we're always comfortable when, when we scrimmage. So that's we want to take that scrimmage attitude and that comfort level out to out to really real games. And, and I think the two scrimmages we had at Utah showed those. We played at a really nice comfort level, confident, and um, hopefully we can continue that at Indiana State this week. Well, and you mentioned a lot of guys returning, but you also have some very impressive newcomers. And you, you already talked about the, the pitching staff as a whole. I think that's probably most evident there because you know you do have guys that were in the starting rotation last year but a lot of guys coming in that are part of those 17 newcomers that will see time in the rotation what, what are your what are your thoughts on the starting rotation heading into this weekend well yeah well so we'll start jack sterner he was a, he's been our uh, starter last year our number one starter last year um you know kind of a power fastball works downhill good some uh, good down and in run and good slider really developing his secondary pitches Nate Daly will go uh, our second game, uh, which will be game one against Marshall. Uh, transfer from CSI, big, strong kid. Um, should, should be in the low to mid-90s with, with great control. And then you talk about newcomers. Jansen Kiesel uh, from Gunnison High School will be our, our third starter, uh, which would be game three or game two against right. Marshall on that, on that doubleheader. But Jansen can run it up there to the mid-90s. And, and uh, just really I'm looking forward to seeing him develop uh, over the course of his three years here. And, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be a high draft pick when he leaves, but he's got a just a, a lightning arm. And then game four, we'll go with Ryan Brady. That's going to be Ohio State on Monday. And so I, I feel really good about that. We have Bryce Robison, who's kind of, he was a starter last year, but had a little bit of a, an elbow issue. So we kind of kept him out this fall. He's right there, just kind of, we can piggyback him as a starter. He can come in in the second inning and finish a game for us. And I really like the ability to use him as a hybrid, kind of a starter, reliever type guy. Well, and with Bryce and, you know, Reed McLaughlin, the the, the bullpen is stacked for you. You have so many options in the pen. Yeah, I mean, Cy Nielsen from the left side and Boston Mavis and, and Cy, um, um, Cooper McKeon from the left side, um, right side Carter Smith and uh, Reed McLaughlin, who have experience. All those guys have experience. I think we're really going to be excited about a left-hander from Bingham High School, Justice Riser, um, true freshman, throws four pitches for strikes, really competes his first outing at Utah up there came in and struck out the side and just you would never know if he's thrown three balls in a row or struck out the side he's just got the same demeanor very athletic feels his position got a great pickoff move just kind of does it all for us let's talk about the position players and there's a lot of very familiar names whether it's Pintar at second Watkins at short Mitch McIntyre Cole Gamble lots of guys that game in and game out each uh, can be the guy well it's fun to see the same team. One one thing about BYU baseball and really other sports here at BYU is we have trouble having continuity because of missions and, you know, guys getting married and they decide not to play. So then you have to bring another guy in. So you, know, you can have an 18 year old or a 26 year old and anything in between. But it's but this year we have some continuity. We've had the same guys for two or three years in, in a row now. And so, yeah, those names you mentioned and you include 
Josh Cowden, you include um, Hayden Latham and Ryan Sapiti, who's swinging it really well. Um, Jacob Rogers and Austin Deming, just going down, just going down the line. I mean, it's, it's uh, really exciting for us. We do have three new guys at the catching spot. Colin Ruder, a freshman. I know you, you want to touch on him a little bit, but um, Mason Strong, a freshman. Um, right now, Mason's hurt. He won't go on the first trip. Chase Peterson and then J.D. Gardner. So we're four deep at the catching spot, but uh, Collins really stepped up for us. Yeah, let's let's go there. This is a freshman catcher from Mississippi, and this guy is special. D1 Baseball has him as the WCC Freshman of the Year. We all know how important the catcher position is for a lot of different reasons. What type of impact do you think he can make his freshman year? Well, I think I think just that. I think he's clearly going to be um, an all-conference type player. He, if you just if you're around him a little bit, he's he's got a certain calmness. He knows how to handle the pitching staff. Uh, big, strong kid. I mean, I think it was Friday. He got a fastball inside and just kind of pulled his hands in, got jammed a little bit, and hit it up into the trees in left field. But he, he just kind of has he, – he's got an old soul. I, I guess that would be the, the best way to put it. He, he never gets rushed, um, never gets his motor going too quick. Um, and he's just one of those guys he, – he, we're going to hit him fourth in the lineup behind Cole Gamble. And um, I think he's going to be just an impact guy for us this year. Let's, uh, let's go to maybe your biggest concern, or maybe even a better word, your biggest unknown right now heading into the season is what? I would say third base. I mean, we, we need a guy – we have those – those guys, Austin Deming and, and Jacob Rogers and freshman Ozzie Pratt's been playing over there a little bit. Brock Watkins plays a great third base. And, and our plan a little bit was to move Pintar to short and Brock over to third just to, to try that. Um, Andrew Pintar's arm's not quite coming back to play short. I think it will eventually. So he's, we're going to play him at second to start off with. And great player. I mean, he's. I, I would assume Penny's going to be gone after this year with a draft, but having a great year. But I would say that's probably the biggest – concern for me we do have guys though um, yeah it's just going to be who can go in there and swing it and play good defense um for nine innings that's that's what we're looking for out of that position all right let's focus on the the opening series in port charlotte florida it is the snowbird baseball classic and as you mentioned uh up first is indiana state that will be on friday and that's a team that's been in the uh, the postseason in 2021 and in 2019 then a double header on saturday against marshall and then ohio state on monday uh just maybe overall thoughts on this tournament in general and then first up indiana state yeah, it's the first time we've been down there. Ohio State runs the tournament. Um, and it's w w my first thought is we're playing 27 innings in 24 hours, <laughs> getting off the plane at like 9 o'clock and then, and then playing uh, a bunch of games. But obviously this time of year, guys, can they're, they're rested and, and ready to go. But, um, you know, I just Indiana State's a really good team. I mean, they're, they're going to be a lot like uh, Texas State was last year as far as being older and more mature. But they're going to be more talented. Be they did go to regional. They got most of their guys back. So it's going to be a good challenge for us. I mean, it's a team that we should be able to, to match up with really well. I mean, I would expect our team to be a regional type team. Um, so that should be a, a, a really good uh, uh, game for us. And then we play Marshall twice. Um, you know, it, it, in baseball, it's like you never know. It, it's it's a team that we should beat. But um, baseball is weird, man. They, you get a pitcher up there who has good stuff that day and or you're lining out to people and and so we need to play two solid games, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll come, come away with two wins. And then obviously Ohio State, who uh, won the Big Ten tournament last year and, and uh, has a lot of their players back. And I'm, I'm excited to see what Ryan Brady's going to do with those guys. And, and uh, you know, he's, Ryan's been on a mission, then came home with co uh, af during COVID and left and came back. And so he, he did a great job just following through with his mission, and now he's, now he's back and ready to go. I'm assuming you're probably like me. You've been checking to see what the weather is supposed to be like in uh, in Florida. 80 degrees. Uh, so I think that's going to be welcomed. Uh, you packing a lot of shorts for this trip? I wish I could go to the beach a little bit, but I don't <laughs> think so. The only shorts I, I'm packing are the ones I wear under my, my baseball pants. No, no morning run on the beach to kind of get, uh, get I'm ready sure, to go? Yeah, I'm sure I'll figure out some time. <laughs> well, Coach, uh, appreciate you stopping by. Really looking forward to this. And uh, just a reminder, uh, all of the games can be heard on the radio, BYU Radio 107.9 FM, and or uh, the app, as well as BYUcougars.com slash live radio. So lots of ways for you to be able to uh, listen to the games. Uh, myself, Tuckett Slade, will have the call for you uh, beginning on Friday against Indiana State. Should be fun. For all the details on times and where you can listen, make sure you go to uh, BYUcougars.com and go to the baseball page and check out the schedule. Coach, let's, uh, let's go. I'm ready for some baseball. Let's do it. Yep. Let's do it. Thanks. Go Cougs.